Well, if you look at the 1990 amendments, okay, in 1990, nobody was really talking about climate change. Okay, so, it, but, you know, there were also significant issues with particulate matters or sulfur dioxide or nitrogen oxides. And that was really the thrust of the Clean Air Act and to set national ambient and air quality standards to reduce lead out of the air. In the early 2000s, there was some litigation on whether or not the Clean Air Act can be used to regulate carbon dioxide. That was decided by the U.S. Supreme Court in Massachusetts versus EPA, and the Supreme Court clearly ruled that under the Clean Air Act, as written in 1990, even though folks did not think about climate change back then, that the Clean Air Act can be used as a tool to regulate uh, carbon dioxide emissions, as well as other greenhouse gas emissions from the United States industry sectors. Under the mercury air toxic standards, the issue that's before the Supreme Court is whether or not EPA had to consider costs in deciding whether or not to actually promulgate the mercury air toxic standard. If EPA wins and the court says, no, you know what, you don't have to really consider costs um, under these provisions, then that will empower, I believe, EPA to maybe do things that you know, stretch the legislative language to, to actually allow broader regulations of the, of, the, uh, of the energy sector. Yeah, one of the most amazing uh, times in my career was my time at EPA learning uh, the, the passion for clean air and clean air act regulations, how they work, was very, very instrumental. Then taking that experience and those lessons learned and applying it to private practice and helping and teaching and, and helping other folks guide through the, these process and learn about how the clean air act works and the regulatory background has been really invaluable. <music>